looks like Curtis with ace per head is cracked. 7K. I never even thought I would get 700. Well, ace per head started out with 700, but I didn't think I was going to do much at all. Really, my wife and uh, ace per head kind of talked me into this thing. I was like, this is not going to last. So to get to 7K, you guys have spent so much time listening to me yammer on this side of the camera. So all the subscribes, the likes, the comments, the views, you guys are the best. I am still uh, astounded uh, that I'm still doing this thing, but I do hope I can keep going and uh, get 8K at some point uh, soon or, you know, whenever. But I am so grateful, guys. Just wanted to give you that shout out. I don't really try to follow these numbers. I don't try to push subs and likes and all that stuff. It makes me feel like a salesman, a little like sticky on the inside. I'm being told that's something I need to kind of do. But anyway, you guys made it happen. I am grateful. Now, because uh, I'm doing this little thing here with the 7K, put on my favorite Conan shirt, and I'm going to cover a topic that I haven't really covered as much as I like, but I love. And that is the duo of Zach Sealer and Christian Wilkins. Now, we get, we're waiting to see the big contract for Wilkins. What's it going to be? When's it going to happen? Then we're, gonna, then we're wondering, well... Can we afford, are we going to be able to keep Sealer as well? So I want to cover their season last year, and there's some interesting stuff. I'm not going to go on too long, but I want to dig into some analytics to show you some interesting thoughts about the players, to dial in exactly who they are and see how they work with each other. And it really, it's a bit of a wonder who is the Batman and who is the Robin. Clearly, the uh, odds-on favorite is Wilkins, but there's some interesting stuff here. These two have such synergy. I don't see it as Batman and Robin, but more like, uh, oh, man, who's two, two, two guys that are close together, like Superman and Wonder Woman or something. I don't know. You know what I mean. So I'm going to get into it quick, but I just want to say again, thank you for the likes, the subscribes, the comments, and the views, guys. I want to give you a shout-out. Shout-out to Ace Bread, my sponsor, because without a doubt, Without you, without them, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, so here's the handy dandy graph I'm going to put up right here. And I'm going to use PFF, but I'm going to use their premium stats to show you that, yeah, they got these color codings, and sometimes we agree, and sometimes we don't. But I'm going to also add their statistics, the actual tackles and missed tackles and sacks and all that stuff, to show you the grading where, really, they're pretty solid in a lot, a lot of stuff. But I want to show the where Christian Wilkin is, uh, Wilkins is, ranks among the top 10. I'm actually adding 11 because Jeffrey Simmons is so darn good, I couldn't keep him out. But then I'm going to put, as you see at the bottom here, Zach Sealer. And then I'm going to wrap it up with one last stat of where their snaps actually happen to create a visual. Now, Christian Wilkins is a stud. Phenomenal pick for us. For a guy to play as good as he has with, I think it was a 13th pick, to get that kind of talent with Christian Wilkins is a phenomenal, phenomenal job to bring that kind of talent in. Now, you can see PFF ranks him number 10. And you might say, well, uh, how do we really gauge that? Well, PFF highly favors pass rush over other assets in the game, run, stop, and such. So I'm not going to really put my hat on he's the 10th best. He could be the 50th, the fifth, well, not the 50th, but he could be the 15th, he could be the 4th, whatever. But that's their rating. Now, I want to get into, they have his run defense, if you rank it up, as fourth. His tackling, which I think that's a very accurate stat, they have it at second. His pass rush, 10th. Uh, cover grade, ninth, which is really not all that much. So, in the PFF stat realm, he's doing really, really good. Even though he's 10th, having the second best tackle rating, uh, fourth best uh, pay, uh, run defense, and even still getting that 10th best pass rush out of these top 11 guys is an excellent, excellent player. But 
he's going to be looking for a major contract. I mean, top, big time, top five, probably contract. And that's why you're seeing this conversation going on with Greer and the Dolphins. Now, I don't know if their, guy, their guys are, are valuing that pass rush so much more and kind of saying, hey, look, you're more of a run defender. You're pretty good at the pass rush. But however you slice it, this guy is critical because really – uh, Jalen Phillips is your primary pass rusher, and he lacks some run defense. Chubb, he is a good run defender in men's and men's. He's a pretty good pass rusher. Uh, he, I mean, he's a good pass rusher, but he doesn't have great speed. And then, you know, you're going to have your linebackers blitz, and you have all these other, But inside, to have a big body like Wilkins, even, say, in around the 10th pass rush, is a big deal. And the run defense aspect gets you into those off-schedule downs by opposing offenses, and that helps you out a ton. Now, so you can see here, he's got total pressures, and when you're kind of laid out, he's ranked around ninth. And so that's that's not bad, but when you get a little deeper, you see he's got the seven sacks, which is seventh. Seven sacks is a lot, guys. I mean, Phillips has 8.5, and to get to the inside and to get seven sacks – is really good, but it's the hits where you see he's only got three. Now, it goes real up with the hurries, and he's got first with eight bats, so he's getting there. He's in the range. He's got the agility to make that vertical jump, to deflect the ball, but he's not that half step away to get those hits, and hits are big. Now, if you look at his uh, play uh, uh, partner in, in crime in college, Dexter Lawrence, he's got 26 hits. He's putting the wood on with nine sacks, 26 hits, so he is affecting the quarterback directly more. Now, those bats come up big. They're not as good as sacks, but they are deflections, and they kind of screw things up. But still, he is just a little bit slow to ever be a super elite pass rusher, but the guy is doing great. Now, it's the tackles, 71 tackles. He's ranked first by a mile. He's ranked 18 more than the last defender. And when you look at his missed tackle rate, which is 4%, middle linebackers envy that missed tackle rate, and he's first in that. But then you go one step farther, and he's first in stops. He stops 58 plays during the course of the season dead, and he is he is first there by a country mile. What do you got, 47? Uh, that's 11 more than the next guy, DeForest Buckner. This guy is a difference maker. He controls that middle. He gets the pass rush, draws the double, has the agility to do so much stuff. You got to admire what this guy can do. He is everything they thought he would be. He is very... Uh, capable going into coverage. He's capable of being that guy who can go inside and out. Now, I want to take a look at Sealer, and it's going to get interesting because can we afford both? I pray we do. All right, to me, these guys are so good together, and yet don't really know what's the synergy that these guys are giving to each other. If you pull one out, what is going to happen to us? You could put Seal on another team, and his production could drop by 40%. You don't know. You could pull him out with Wilkins, and you could see a substantial drop in his production. I do think that Wilkins is the more talented player, but Seal is really close. These two guys are real special. Now, he's ranked 23 by PFF, and but there's going to be some mitigating factors I'm going to bring into this. Not to say he's better than Wilkins, but to say that He's kind of playing a little bit of the tougher role. So he's ranked eighth in total pressures of all these top 10 guys. So he's generating a ton of pressure, even though he's ranked 23. Now, he's third in tackles at 51. These two guys are controlling the line of scrimmage. They're the reason we had, well, one of the major reasons we had the run defense we had last year. And he is second in stops with 44. These guys are dominate together. It's not even, it's almost unbelievable when you add the rest of the talent around them, what these guys can and have and will do. It's so impressive. Now, if you go look at his uh, little thing, the tack thing there, he's been misses a lot of tackles and 
you know, his pass, his run defense isn't on the level of Wilkins. But, but, if you go down and look at this next chart here, and this is the layout of where they played through the course of the season. Now, Wilkins is a big guy. Seal is a big guy. Neither one is a super fast kind of guy. You'd expect them to be three tech. And you can see it here. Go do in the A and B gap. And clearly, the A gap, Wilkins has 90, Seal of 46. The B gap, 520. And then 422. But if you go back to the last chart, you see, he, you know, Wilkins had almost 100, uh, 80 more, 90 more snaps. Uh, then you see OVT means over the tackle. They're both about the same, but it's the OUT on the outside of the tackle where Wilkins had 33 and Seal 114. That is hard for a guy that size to play outside and do what he does. And coming outside from all the out there, it's slower. There's a longer distance. You're dealing with better pass blockers to get to the quarterback. And he is doing the harder job. When you're inside, the guys are a little bit bigger at guard. They're more stout. Sometimes you're getting that center help. Uh, you know, on the outside, you get a tight end help. But it's a longer run towards the quarterback. And so this push-pull along the line with Wilkins in that A, haunting that A gap a lot, and the B gap, and then you got Sealer, usually in that three, te uh, the three D lineman look, where if you can look at the, the chart again, I'll put it up here, you'll see this one, Sealer will play the C on the right side in the C gap, and then Wilkins usually will play the first A between the le le left guard and the center, and then you'll get somebody else in between the right tackle and right guard, and you'll get that look, and so sometimes Wilkins plays there, but those two guys, dealing with the center guard tackle and tight end, have had phenomenal success. These guys are really studs. They work so well together. And I, I don't know if we can keep them both, but where they're playing now has got the two of them playing some of the best football in the league. And the, as a duo, there's not much better. I have to go through and look through, but off, offhand, there's maybe three groups, maybe three tandems that are in the same breath as Sealer and Wilkins. So, guys, we need to sign one of them, 100%. I think Wilkins is the guy you must sign clearly because Sealer, when he's inside, he's a little bit higher and he plays a little more abandoned. I always worried about his knees on there. And you need somebody inside to control that A and B gap, and that's Wilkins. So Wilkins clearly going to get signed, and I think he's going to get a top five contract easy. And I don't know if we're going to be able to keep Seal. I hope we do because, man, oh, man, what a wonderful time watching these two guys play. So we've got two awesome guys. I wanted to celebrate how much – I mean, you had Ramsey and Howard – Kohu and Needham and Holland slowing things down with Fangio causing these, you know, confusion defenses, these mixed match zones. And then you got Phillips and Chubb and you got uh, Agba coming back, who's got to be much closer to 100% than he was last year. Along with Wilkins and Sealer on the backside, you got Long and Baker. This is an unbelievable front. There's no way this is not going to be top 10 plus defense unless you have a mash unit where six of these guys go down or something like that. So get ready for a great season. I don't know if the tandem is going to continue past this year. So just enjoy it, guys. This has been a beautiful, when you go back and watch the film, it's going to be a hard time getting the beauty of what these two guys create along with the rest of the players, uh, with, you know, going forward if they break up, guys. So enjoy the season. Thank you for the 7K. Thank you for all that you guys do. You're the best. You put up with this monkey, and I appreciate it. Curtis saying thanks. Thanks a lot. Catch you next time. Be well. Go Fins. Building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with AceBread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.